Okay, we have head coach Mike Leach, and he wants to go right straight to questions. Who would like to lead us off? Right here, coach, to your left front row. Hey, coach, Nick Niehaus, WABT TV in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, three quarterbacks on your roster, uh, all three from Mississippi. Is there some kind of quality that you're finding from these guys from the Magnolia State that you really like? Well, they, they have great football. You know, uh, Mississippi's got great football. The whole state does, and a lot of enthusiasm around it. And so, and then, of course, uh, you know, starting out recruiting, you, you know, you, you, I'd say most of our players are, you know, from uh, relatively close within four hours or so, and then, and then uh, branch out from there. But uh, I, I think a pretty good combination. You know, in that four and a half hour radius, we've gotten some pretty good guys, and then, um, and then have also gotten you know some guys that really have an interest in what we're doing in our program uh, from a long ways away that uh, you know are involved too. So that's yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty good. We got some guys from Florida, California, and Texas, and spots in between. And so, uh, but anybody excited about what we're doing, we're excited to look at them. You know, coach to your left, second row. Coach Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 here in Birmingham. Uh, some sad news coming out today about uh, head coach Bobby Bowden, and uh, he means a lot to this community here in Birmingham. I want to know what your thoughts are on what Bobby meant, means to the coaching community in general and what he meant to you as a coach, kind of looking up to him in a way. Uh, I first became aware of, of uh, Coach Bowden when, uh, well, first of all, he's a, he's, a, he's a great person, great example to everybody, and has a great family. And... Uh, you know, was never afraid to kind of share himself, uh, um, you know, both uh, kind of spiritually, wisdom-wise, uh, anything. You know, he's like, uh, and, you know, just kind of gave to everybody, I felt like, and and, and I was lucky enough to know him. Um, and, and and so, uh, you know, uh, I but I remember when I was in junior high, uh, I loved watching his teams play because they threw it before other people were throwing it very much, and and it was as they were emerging, you know, as he was building uh, the program, they would, um, <clears throat> you know, they somebody's supposed to uh, get after, you know, Florida State, and uh, you know, and they'd have these big upsets and things like that, and then by the time I was at Valdosta State, you know, they were one or two in the country every year, and um, you know, just uh just a great guy, and uh, he's one of those guys that uh, uh, that really made you want to coach, wanted to be a coach, wanted to be a part of uh, you know what he was doing, and wanted, wanted to um, <clears throat> you know great example on how to do it well, uh, but then also you know just a complete person uh, along with all that. So yeah, it was, uh, it, it was it, I feel uh, very honored to. Uh, the you know the time that I've had to spend with him. Coach would like to go to your right on the second row. Coach Tyler Shaw with uh, KBTX and College Station. Uh, just curious, your thoughts <coughs> on coming back to Kyle Field this year? I know a place that you're familiar <coughs> with with your days at Tech. Uh, thrilled to come back to Kyle Field. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the greatest places uh, in America to play. You know, just the environment and the the magnitude of uh, people and enthusiasm there and their traditions. Uh, um, <clears throat> always like coming to Kyle Field and look forward to it this year. And we had some great games, you know, in Kyle Field over the years. Coach, to your left on the front row. Hey, Coach. Jack Abraham is someone who obviously put up a lot of big numbers at Southern Miss. What kind of caught your eye with him when you when you realized he was in the transfer <laughs> portal and everything? Uh, the ball comes off his hand quick. He's accurate. Um, the other thing, I, I did think he elevated the players around him. Um, and then, you know, uh, I think pretty good pocket awareness. And then the other thing, um, <clears throat> we were looking for both depth and experience. And, and uh, you know, and, and he's, he's the most experienced uh, quarterback we have on our team right now. And then, of course, those guys will battle it out and fight it out, and we'll see what happens. And also, uh, if I could follow up, Conference USA to SEC, it's obviously a big step up in level of competition, even in you know, just practice in the spring. How has he kind of responded to that level up? Well, I thought he looked good. I thought he looked, uh, I thought he looked very good. I thought he had a good spring. And, uh, and you know, I got, he got better the, as time went on, you know. 
Coach, to your right on the third row. Coach, you got a chance to play against Mike Elko in Texas A&M's defense last year. When you look at Coach Elko and what he brings from his, from his defensive coordinator position, what, what makes his defense so unique and tough to go against? I don't think it's unique as much as it's, it's just really sound. You know, every, I think, uh, um, you know, very sound defense. Like, you don't, the guys aren't out of position. You know, guys are where they're supposed to be. Uh, they play hard. Uh, and it's really, it's one of the highest compliments I can give uh, somebody is that uh, uh, they're very sound. And that's, that's, uh, that's what I think he's, he's really strong with them. Coach, to your left, second row. Hey, Coach, Jacques Doucet, WAP-TV. Uh, Austin Williams was in here a while ago and said, when you guys go see movies on Friday night, you stay to the end and watch the credits. Is that something we should all appreciate a little bit more? Um, I, I do watch the credits, and it's not to get, um, <clears throat> you know, occasionally they try to ambush you with one extra quick little thing, and, um, and I, don't, I don't get ambushed. And so, but that's not really the reason. I'll be honest with you. One of the big reasons that I watch the credits is um, I'm always curious where they filmed it. And I'm, I, I get, I'm kind of uh, obsessive about where they filmed it. And, uh, and so that's one of the things I'm, uh, you know, I'm waiting for. And then, uh, you know, and who was in it. And occasionally I can remember it's familiar with the, their work or something like that, but uh, yeah, I'm a big uh, where they filmed it guy. A little bit. I'll look at that, uh, and occasionally there'll be a song or something that uh, I'll try to figure out what it wa what it is, or there'll be somebody does you know a song you know, but you're not sure who did it, and so yeah, I'll try to sort that some too. You got to be quick with your eyes though, because you know the that soundtrack stuff. They go well, they go sideways, you know. Here, try to read them both at the same time. We're going real fast, you know. Coach, we will go to your right on the back row. Eric Kane, the Sports Animal, VolQuest.com. Uh, Javonta Payton left uh, for Tennessee this offseason. What is Tennessee getting in Javonta Payton, and what type of uh, wide receiver does, is he, and how will he succeed in that offense? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know. I mean, I just uh, talk about guys on our team, you know. So... Uh, uh, you know, we'll let the, the volunteers handle that. Back to your left on the front. <coughs> Is that me? I'm sorry. I'm yes. Okay. Uh, Coach, so Austin Williams also said that implementing the air raid this year after going through it a whole season, it's kind of easier, obviously. Uh, they're not learning as much. They're just being told where to go in the moment, and they're, they're picking it up a lot better. Have you noticed that it's gotten a lot smoother than it did that first year? Obviously, COVID and no spring ball, it, it hurt that. How much smoother has it looked in practice? Well, in spring, it definitely has. Uh, you know, instead of everybody thinking about uh, things, it's more automatic. Uh, uh, you know, they get where they're supposed to be quicker and more precisely. Um, you know, which synchronizes things, and as that happens, it elevates the execution. Uh, we we still got a ways to go, no question, but uh, yeah, it, it was a big improvement from the season. And then just following up with the movie question, do you have a, a handful of go-to movies, uh, that are your favorites? Favorite movies? I mean, I got a bunch of favorite movies. Um, uh, oh, some really good ones. Uh, well, Rio Bravo, a Sting, everybody likes Citizen Kane, and I like Citizen Kane. Um, uh, anything by Alfred Hitchcock, I would say Psycho and Rear Window would be my favorites. Oh, the uh, Rope's good, too. And then um, I'll tell you one that uh, you don't hear them talk about or see so much anymore is uh, um, uh, the... Uh, where Eagles Dare was a great movie, all-star cast, that type of thing. And then, um, and a lot of all-star cast ones really aren't very good. Um, well, because there's not enough space for everybody. You know, you try, by the time you have space for this hot shot, space for this hot shot, space for, well, then there's no plot, because all there is is these, you know. And Fargo's a great movie. Uh, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid, Outlaw Josie Wales, 
Um, uh, there's a bunch. I could be your old. A Wonderful Life is a tremendous movie. Pretty much anything by Frank Capra is a great movie. Um, the best one I've seen this year, uh, it's got Better Call Saul in it, and it's uh, uh, called Nobody. Uh, Nobody, yeah. That's the best one I've seen this year. I mean, and we've been on kind of a drought this year, in my humble opinion. Um, besides, there's not so many. I mean, you're... Coach, we have time for two questions. We'll go in the back on your right, and then we'll come he, to the front row. He wants to talk about something other than movies. So <laughs> <laughs> He hated all those movies. All right, go ahead. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that. I could talk movies all day. Um, you know, the, the name, image, likeness things already happened uh, July 1st, and then there's so much talk about, you know, expanding the playoff 12. I heard in there you said, you know, you're a proponent of 64. Just with, with college football changing so much and seemingly by the week, you know, how do you – is that something you like, dislike, how much the game seems to be changing this offseason? Uh, I think – no, I'd like it to settle down a little bit. Um, and because there's just a lot of things you got to – wait and see where the dust settles on it, you know? I mean, I, you know, and I guess uh, earlier in my career, I mean, I'd chase around memos and guess and speculate and, you know, <clears throat> grab the newspaper and, ooh, they said this, they might do that. Well, maybe they will, maybe they won't, they might, you know? I, that drove me crazy. I mean, after, after a while, I stopped doing that. I just, I just wait till they finalize it. And some of the name, image, and likeness stuff, uh, the dust is going to settle somewhere, and we'll see where it is. I think you've got to guard against. Um, you've got to guard against uh, there, it being a bidding war, because I, if I think if it's a bidding war, it'll really damage college football. Uh, you know, like as far as an amount or something. I don't care what the amount is, as long as it's not a bidding war. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they're just observations. I mean. As we progress, well, this is what professionals do. This is what the NFL does, and uh, the rest. I mean, uh, you know, this is kind of the fun stuff, the more beneficial stuff. You know, other things that could be around the corner. You know, if you keep going down this path, is uh, you know, uh, draft. You know, guys getting drafted instead of recruited. Guys getting traded. Guys getting cut. You know, and keep in mind they do this in in. In baseball, minor league and major league baseball, you know, guy, you know, the, the, the parents, you know, uh, hug their son and, you know, he's got him a new TV and, you know, some school clothes and pulls into his dorm and, you know, kind of a tearful departure and, you know, pretty soon a guy comes running up to him and says, hey, he says, yeah, hey, I got some bad news. Yeah, uh, you've been traded. You're going to say San Jose and um, and uh, they're gonna need you they're gonna need you in two days and by the way I'm gonna need this room by tomorrow morning so uh, I mean you know I mean it there, cause there's a lot of dimension to a lot of this and then one thing that I think would um, be helpful a, a friend and I were were talking about this and um, uh, and uh, you know and he had, you know, well, he had a great initial idea, and then we kind of talked about it more. And uh, uh, you know, the thing, the thing is, is I think we, we don't want to discourage people from getting degrees. I think it's uh, it's uh, it's false that you know everybody acts like football players don't want degrees. Almost every football player I know definitely wants a degree. You know, it's not just they they want degrees. Okay, and. Um, and so I think, you know, you want uh, guys uh, to graduate and get degrees. And then this portal has proven to be fool's gold. It's, uh, what's the number? 1,100 are out in the cold right now. You know, they'll be selling big gulps or whatever. Uh, hopefully finishing school somewhere, I hope, you know. But uh, certainly would have, uh, in, in a lot of cases, probably uh, uh, would like to wish they'd rethought that decision. And um, so I think that there's got to be an encouragement to stay, you know, at the school you sign with. And uh, what if we were to give $150,000 to the guy comes in, $150,000 when you graduate, 
when you graduate. You get your scholarship and all that, but you get an additional $150,000 when you graduate. Okay, people are going to be, one, they're going to graduate. I mean, they're, they're going to be a lot more inclined to graduate. And then the other thing is, is um, you know, if you transfer, you don't get the $150,000. You get the $150,000 if you're at the school you signed with. And then I think that, um, you know, in a positive way, as long as we're talking about distributing money, um, the uh, guys are inclined to stay at the, uh, the school, graduate, and not transfer. And I think, I, and, and I'm, you know, there could definitely be some holes in uh, this idea and theory, and it's, a, you know, it's just a starting point. But, you know, I think so, something like that may be something to think about. Our final question, Coach, right here, front row on the right. Hey, Coach. Kate Thomas, WFB TV, Baton Rouge. Um, do you feel like the NFL is becoming more open to air raid quarterbacks, especially with the success of guys like Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes? And then also I want to know what you think about the fashion style of everyone here at SEC Media Days. The fashion what? Just everybody's fashion that they have, the different looks. But the first one, the air raid. Uh... <coughs> Well, the air raid's been around the NFL for a long, long time, um, and a lot longer than you know as some people think. Uh, some of these guys, I'm going to toss them a pen and say, "Here, draw up what you're talking about," you know, and they, they'll run from that pen like it's a rattlesnake. I guarantee you. But um, the uh, it, it's been around. Concepts like that have been around the NFL. Uh, we're probably getting pretty close to 20 years. Uh, certainly 10. The last, you know, the last 10 Super Bowls, uh, you know, both teams have ran some form of air raid concepts, you know, and they they may not have they may have not have gotten it from the air raid specifically, but it was you know stuff that's uh, like that, you know, utilizing the personnel attacking the space, and so there's been quarterbacks like there for quite some time. I think one thing that. Um, created so many quarterbacks as, uh, as they start having the seven-on-seven seven leagues. You know, as, they, as the seven-on-seven seven leagues took off and different states would have the tournaments and seven-on-seven, seven, you know, I think it developed a lot of quarterbacks and receivers. And I, so I think that, uh, you know, that definitely contributed to things. But, you know, I mean, the New England Patriots, how many Super Bowls, uh, air raid concepts, uh, you know, I mean, um, so, uh, and then I guess I was a little conscious because uh, two of my guys played, Danny Amendola and Wes Welker, both played for New England, had another guy too. Uh, but anyway, um, I think it's been around for quite a while. And then the other thing is, you know, in my case, it's a byproduct of, uh, you know, just watching football all the time, studying uh, uh, film and, <clears throat> you know, copying and then uh, maybe adjusting and putting our own twist on it. And so, you know, that's gone on for since football started is, uh, you know, th like everybody thinks they're just throwing it now. They just started throwing it now. Wow, they've been doing it for about 25 years and everybody's just listened to too many people that said they're not throwing it very much. If you think they're not throwing it, ask Alabama if they, if they threw it at all last year. And then, uh, um, but, uh, you know, you go clear back to Sammy Baugh. Sammy Baugh threw the ball a lot, you know. So uh, that's why they called him slinging Sammy Baugh. Anyway, uh, that's it. for in, in, Coach, thank you. You've been very gracious with your time, voluminous with your answers, and nobody's done a finer job than you in here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I don't always get an illuminous. That's a good one. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to my wife. Tell her that I'm illuminous. She'll tell us you got to have a vocabulary. All right, thanks. <laughs>